Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So this week I'm just going to be exploring, actually for the first time, I haven't played with this, but the new Canva tools which have all of the AI functionalities. So if you're interested in exploring the new Canva AI functionalities, then please keep on watching. Okay, if there's one stop shop go-to tool that I would recommend for AI is Canva. And I love the philosophy of Canva. They give pro access to all educators, teachers, schools, and, and educational institutions. And I just love their philosophy for supporting education. So recently they rolled out Canva AI. You can see there's a big new bubble. So I'm gonna just move myself over here, make myself a little bit smaller. And rather than me playing around with a, a prompt of my own, we're just going to explore some of the templates and ideas that they have already. So I can you know, input an idea, bring it to life design for me, create a page, create an image, draft a doc, and then of course it can code. So at the moment, I was using Chord Sonnet 3.7 to code or some of the other large language models on Poe. But now it's so nice to have all of these functionalities within one platform in one ecosystem. All right. So let's have a look. So what we can do with the AI, uh, interactive pricing calculator, not really relevant for me. So what I'm going to do is try and look for something educational, okay? We can have an interactive historical timeline. That might be interesting. Uh, perhaps we could ask students to actually create that and then check, you know, the different details and edit. I think Canva is a great tool for teachers and students, and students can use it in a collaborative fashion because it allows you to share any kind of design that you're working on. So let me just have a look to see. Uh, what I'm going to have a look at that's more education focused. So I do wish this was categorized a little bit better so I didn't have to read everything. Let's have a look at the sorting. Okay, a sort. Okay, so let's double click here. So once I double click, here we go. It says, and you can see it coding here, create an interactive categorization game where students drag and drop items into correct buckets. Start with examples, science game sorting animals into mammals, reptiles, and amphibians with immediate feedback and progress tracking. As a follow-up, ask me about specific items to categorize, category names, themes, difficulty levels, visual theme preferences, feedback style for correct and incorrect answers. Okay, so I'll create an interactive drag and drop categorization game for sorting animals into biological classes. So that's quite a nice idea, actually. And you can see that Canva is generating all of the code for us. And I'm just going to keep the recording playing so that we can see how long this actually takes for us. But you can see we're up to, you know, nearly 180, nearly 200 lines of code. So I can see we're starting to get onto the mammals, reptiles, amphibians, different categories. Okay, and we're up to 220 lines of code. Okay, and if it's going to take, let's say, more than, you know, two, three minutes, then I may hit the pause button because we don't want to be waiting uh, for all of the code to generate. But this just demonstrates how complex the code is just to create this interactive game where students can drag and drop and categorize. Okay, when uh, we up to 350 lines of code now. Maybe with the recording, I am going to hit the pause and I will let you know how long this actually takes. Okay, so I'm back. It probably... After I hit pause, it probably took another minute to a minute and a half. So here is the animal classification game. Drag and drop animals into the correct bucket, correct biological class. All right, so snake is going to go. Let me try and drag this. Snake is going to go uh, into, how do I drag these into the categories? Okay, so do I add a plus sign here? Okay, it says drag these animals, and I can't seem to drag them, you can see, but I can turn them over. So it says legless reptiles with scales, okay, lizard is a reptile as well, 
uh, salamander, as far as I know, is a reptile. Now, this can't drag, but I suppose I could see it's got version one. When I'm creating my own app using Claude Sonnet 3.7, I actually have to go through quite a few iterations. Now, I don't want to be wasting energy, so I'm not going because I'm and I'm not going to be using this particular activity, so I'm not going to go through all of those iterations. But let's go back and just explore then a little bit more. Okay, see what you can do with the code. So here are some different games. Let's have a look at the interactive historical timeline. Okay, so create an interactive historical timeline component that engages students. Start with an example of ancient civilizations, 3000 BC to 500 CE, featuring Egyptian, Greek, Roman key events with expandable information cards and a cohesive visual style. As a follow-up, ask me about specific historical events. Okay, so let's just code that and then press enter. And then once again, I think a new window is going to pop up on this side. And let's just let that generate. Now we know it may be a few hundred lines, so I'll time this, hit pause, and then we'll come back. Okay, I'm so glad that I actually hit the pause button because that took a whole four minutes. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm just going to move myself out of the way. You can use the design as well, and I'm suppose, I am suppose you can edit. This is an interactive timeline. When I press here, it's got some information about hieroglyphic writing, and so students can actually explore this. Here's what is what happened in this one. Okay, so this is like three in early. Then we go to middle. We can look up Egyptian, Greek, Roman. And you can see, click on timeline markers to discover key events. Okay, so it's a nice little uh, interactive timeline here. So here, the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Um, I suppose what I would do with something like this is, rather than going chronologically only, I might just look at ancient civilizations through a particular lens, whether that's through power or looking at the different leaders, right? Or whether I'm looking at uh, innovation as we go through early, middle, and late um, in terms of this historical timeline. So I think if I was going to use this in class, I would actually use some conceptual lenses and some guiding questions, conceptual questions, and use these facts to, in fact, build conceptual understanding through those conceptual lenses. So if they're looking at power, for example, they'd be looking at the facts of the different leaders throughout what happened, and then I'd pose some conceptual questions as well. Okay, so that was a really brief look at Canva AI. At the moment, I'm still using Claude uh, Sonnet 3.7 to create all of my apps and to do the coding. I think it's lovely that Canva has moved in this direction. I can imagine that they'll probably really advance this page and make it a little bit more user-friendly, put it into categories. Uh, maybe we want educational resources specifically just for the classroom and for teachers. So thank you so much for joining me this week. If you have explored the new Canva AI functionalities, please feel free to share in the comment section below and I hope to see you next time.